your Wednesday prime time? Are you doing relatively, uh, you know, kind of good or what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's all important because, you know, we get ratings. Uh, you've been on this longer than I have, and you know what about the ratings. They give you ratings on mm-hmm. on the call-ins and everything. Okay. Right. Uh, all right. Well, today I wanted to uh, discuss. Uh, you know, I'm a I'm a uh, historic and historical buff. I love uh, mm-hmm. history, and now that I'm into my story, or better yet, our story, I'm more into it now than ever before. And a lot of things that I've learned in the past, they come up different. Uh, as I look at it today, because of the knowledge and understanding that I'm gaining from, uh, you know, all the way around. So uh, this Berlin Conference, I'm sure that most of our people have never heard of the Berlin Conference. Uh, Probably they would think about the Nuremberg trials when they finally uh, so-called defeated the Nazis, and they had that gigantic uh, trial in Nuremberg, Germany, where they put all the Nazis on trial for war crimes. But this Berlin, Germany conference was held in 1884 and 1885. Were you taught anything about this conference when you were in school, Ben? I can't remember hearing about it. You're right, you're right. They uh, the whole lot of things they didn't bring out, and if they were mentioned, uh, they try and get around a lot of uh, history by just mentioning mentioning it uh, briefly mm-hmm. in passing. You never think about it. But this Berlin conference, uh, briefly, we want to discuss before we get into Paris, France, and the uh, quote unquote terrorism that's over there. Berlin conference was a group of Westerner, Western powers, they call themselves, that uh, the Berlin Conference was Africa's undoing in more ways than one. The colonial powers superimposed their domains on the African continent. By the time the independents returned to Africa in 1950, that's over 100, almost 100 years, you know, it, 50, yep, 1950, yep. The realm had acquired a legacy of political fragmentation that could neither be uh, alienated or uh, alienated nor made to operate satisfactorily. In other words, they had destroyed Africa so bad with this superimposed uh, domains that they put over the continent that the entire uh, continent itself, which is the largest continent on earth, was put in complete dis- disarray. They 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 took the borders and they they made their own new borders. They held a conference in Berlin. Did not invite any Africans. It was all Europeans. And they they argued for three months, and haggled and argued and fought because. Some people say that World War One was was started because of uh, undesirable choices that were made at the Berlin Conference, and they uh, put a uh, they just took a, a picture of the complete continent and they just drew circles and squares and blocks and said, "I want this area, I want that area, I want this area." I have the the, the map. If you if you uh, read that information I sent you, Beth, they had a map yeah. on how it, yeah. it was done. It, it was disgraceful, and it's very interesting that we we need to know because uh, when I was in Africa, I, I went on a vacation in 1995. I was in Africa in Ghana. I was at Aqua, and I was questioning a lot of uh, of the natives that were there. And they were telling me things like there were uh, hundreds of different tribes on the continent, and every tribe had designated land. And you know me, I said, well, where did the land come from? They said the gods gave them the land. 
and they had been living there for centuries and centuries and centuries with no problems other than the regular conflicts. But then when you retreat back to your land, the conflict was over. Mm -hmm. Anytime there was a conflict prior to the European, they would go and fight into someone else's land, probably to steal uh, something like uh, uh, they didn't didn't deal with uh, resources. But let's say uh, food and fruit and, and crops and stuff like that, whatever they needed. And they would it would cause conflicts, and then they would fight. But when the European came, he overlooked everyone's culture, heritage, nationality, and created 50 states on the continent on his by his boundaries, which made enemy tribes be in the same areas. And, and that was not good because there was no uh, refuge, uh, refuge. There was nowhere for them to go when they did these uh, uh, tribal uh, conflicts, when they had these conflicts. And so as a result, as a result, it brought on a lot of chaos. Now, in modern-day television, the European used the uh, uh, the conflict to teach us, the American uh, blacks, that Africans were heathens, wild people. They killed each other. They did all they could with the Tarzan uh, uh, syndrome, which I was raised during the Tarzan syndrome. And they were just, they made it clear that if it wasn't for the white man, the whole continent would go to hell, just fall off the face of the earth. So that's what was taught to the unsuspecting Africans, and I'm I'm using that term loosely because I'm really going back to the beginning when there was only a solid mass, which the Europeans found out about. And then when they had the cataclysmic earthquakes, they began to break off into these different areas because of the oceans and the waters. So when they say, uh, you come from Africa, that is technically a true statement, but the way they describe you coming from Africa was a bunch of BS. Okay. Oh, like we all came over on the slave ship. Yes, that's the, that's that's what they did. Now, psychologically, that was a good uh, ploy on their part because it made us feel uh, uh, guilty that we were saved by them. I think, just think about that loosely. We were saved by the Europeans to take us out of the trees, swinging through the trees like gorillas and monkeys, and killing each other at will, and were brought to a land where we put clothes on us and fed us and what have you. So we really owe them something. Now, they talk that to us through uh, television, and I say us, I'm talking about my era, but they, they taught it in the schools to the Europeans. Probably 90% of all white folks still today believe they did us a favor by bringing us over here because they never told of the riches and the education and the intellect and the culture and the medicine, all of the uh, positiveness of Africa. They never exposed it to the school books. So even today... Even as you look at TV today, and we're going to go into that, that what's going on in France, which is a a a, 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 a feedback of this Berlin conference. Okay. All now, right. if you get any if you get any questions or any uh, comments, telephone calls. We'll take them as they come in, man. If, if you don't mind. Oh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. uh, but you know now okay. that. Now that I'm looking and I'm I'm reading more about our history and I'm looking up the different tribes, I'm seeing that that the European has a pattern and they don't ask for what they want. They just come in and take what they want. That's true. That's true. And and the strategy of taking 
it is a military strategy that works because the way they take it in such a gruesome way, it puts fear in other places. That and the word spreads of what they did to that by taking it. So when they get to other villages or other areas, nine times out of ten, the people will just give it to them because they don't want to die. And well, they what, 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 re- so, go well, ahead. really, what it, it's just uh, how amazing, I could say, or unbelievable, how they have not changed their strategy. From way back to 18, 1500s, whenever all of this started, even to today, they constantly yeah. is showing that Paris, uh, what happened there, and they that's psychological. That's they putting that fear in people's mind. They constantly showing it on TV. All the, and this is what they were doing back in the day. So their strategy has not changed. Not changed. All right. Well. Let me ask you this. If it's not broke, why fix it? But my thing is, what kind of mental illness is going on with the rest of us that we don't wake up, that we keep buying into this hypnotic uh, state that they put us in? Well, that's that's a good question. And the answer is we put ourselves in slavery because of the fear that's been put in us. And let's not forget the, the Willie Lynch syndrome. You know, we when you look at cowboy movies and they say the Indian used to scalp people, well, the Indian would make it very clear. He never did that. He only started doing it when the European was doing it. Now, the question to you would be, or to the audience would be, why did the European scout the red man or the Indian? Now, that's very, that's an easy answer to that question because it put fear in them that if you keep fooling with us you and, and we capture you, you're going to get, we're going to scalp you. And that was a, a, a no-no for most tribes because of their culture that they wanted to be in one piece, and surely they didn't want to be scalped after they were dead. So it put fear in them. So the mothers would put that fear into the children. So as that boy grew up, he was aware of the danger of losing a battle to the Europeans. Now, if you can win all the time, that's one thing. But when you did lose, the European would make an example out of your loss. And you read that in the paperwork I sent you when that one uh, uh, area tried tried to pull out from under France, and France used it as an example. Now, that fear is still in them today from mother to child. It's still in them. They still teach that. So the European can really go home and sleep because the fear that he put into them 100 years earlier Will let him sleep at night. One guy asked me, but, he's uh, still, but he, but but he's still reinforcing it as he go. He, you know, I mean, yeah. he's using the same strategy. Like I say, we he's putting the fear in the people. They showing it on TV right now. Today is what they did back in 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 eighteen eighty five. So why haven't we came up with the strategy of how to overcome the fear? That's what I'm not understanding. All right. If you became a warrior and you were out at night destroying the enemy and they couldn't find you, so they would come to the area where we know she lives on the west side. So we will go to the west side and burn down every house we see, and anybody that runs out, we'll kill them or cut their hands off, and then we'll go home. Now, now certain things going to happen from that. Number one, people are going to ask you to stop doing what you're doing. It ain't changing the strategy. It's, it's the tactic that they use. And they say, well... Go ahead. Why what? But 
why do we keep, I mean, why can't we go and do to them what they do to us? Put the fear exactly. back, send the ball, do yeah. it like ping pong, yeah. send that ball back yeah. over there. All right. All right. Let's, let's, let me tell you what happened. Over, okay. we get into Paris. In Paris, they have done, in three days, they have done 414 raids in three days. They've killed mm-hmm. uh, close to 10 people, a uh, so-called enemy, and they've arrested uh, close to 100, and they put another 100 under house arrest. Now, put yourself in that in that city as they are raiding these houses at 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning, and you're asleep, got to go to work the next day, and you got your babies and your children, everybody's in that house, and, and they're raiding the neighborhood, dropping bombs, machine guns, and all of that stuff, and you're asking, why don't we go and do it to them? We're scared to do it to them. Because when they come one back, day, we, the devil is now. Them. When they come, wait a minute, wait a minute, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As they, as as those people did what you said, and that was attack. They attacked the the population of France, Paris, France. And when the Europeans saw what they'd done, his tactic was the old way. Let's go and kill all we can kill. They didn't ask. They didn't. They didn't have warrants. They didn't have a, 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 a what they call it probable cause to raid those houses. They couldn't get 414 paperwork and documents in place in three days. They just started kicking doors down. They kicked down doors of people that had nothing to do with it. They kicked down doors of French people who who were actually French. They didn't give a damn. They were putting fear into the community because they had word that a girl that they thought was belonged to them, she went into that neighborhood. Now, they retaliated in a, a way more uh, a heavy position than it was the other way around. I don't know the death toll, but I guarantee you that what the French have done to them and I say them as being a blanket them, the terrorists did to the French. But the French did it much more drastic and much more in detail. And they're not finished. And and then if, if they got you, you haven't done a damn thing. They got you down there knowing you on the radio, knowing you are uh, got ideas and thoughts of being free, and now they're threatening to put you in a, uh, 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 waterboard you, let's put it that way, to waterboard you. Now, if they don't want to kill you, but they want to make it so bad for you, when they let you out, you're going to tell what happened to you, and you're going to put fear in everybody in your your domain is going to be scared that they don't want to get caught. That's tactics. That's war. Does that make sense? Am I getting to you? Yeah, well, they seem like that they're very good at war, and uh, and most of us are not. Most of us are not. <laughs> well, you're right. You're totally correct. You're totally correct because we have been we've been through a, a, a era of Christianity where we want to forgive. How can you say your mother went to a Wednesday night prayer meeting and a and a punk came in there and killed everybody in there? And the first thing come out of your mouth, we're going to forgive because Jesus and God and all that mess he talked. How is that possible? I know I couldn't do it. Period. Zero, zilch. I know I couldn't do it. Okay? So That's that European that psychology. psychology. You're right. You're totally correct. And it works. So I'm asking you again, why change it? It worked uh, 1,500, 1,400. 1800, 1900, and it's happening in 2000. It's still working. Look what they did with the, uh, uh, whatchamajigger, the uh, 9-11. All evidence showed that it was an inside job. Everything they did from that point forward related to the fact that it was an inside job. They told all the news people, do not mention that. They gave them uh, talking points. Whatever you do, don't say this. Don't say that. 
Nobody's even challenged it. Nobody's even brought it up. Nobody brought up the fact that if it wasn't for Desert Storm, which was a total flop, Desert Storm was a total flop. The only thing they did that was accomplished, they killed hundreds, thousands of of, of Iraqis. They didn't find what they were looking for. There was no evidence of this, no evidence of that. Now, the people are scared to death. The people in America were so scared because of 9-11, they let them come up with this homeland security, and everywhere you go, you got to get searched. And everybody's complaining about it today, but they didn't complain about it then. But you think they were smart enough to look and say, or get on the news or somebody say, hey, wait a minute. That's totally impossible. How that building going to fall down? There ain't nothing over there. <laughs> Couple of them, I can't go through the whole thing, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, and then the first thing you always see on television when there's a crime, the first thing that happens when the police show up, they careen off the crime scene. Am I correct or incorrect? Mm-hmm. This has to be the biggest crime that was ever committed. I don't care who did it by dropping that building and killing 3,000 people. Do you know within seven days the, the, the steel and the bricks were sold to China and it was on a ship on their way to China? How in yeah, the hell but, is that yeah. possible? Nobody <laughs> said a word. Okay? Now, when you put all that together, your questions don't make sense. And, I, and, I, and I'm not saying that negative, I'm saying it positive, because the people that, that you got people today that still believe that the Arabs did it. And they did the same thing in, in Paris that they did in uh, 9-11. What was it, three days after 9-11, somebody said they found a, uh, a driver's license in a garbage can that belonged to an Arab. And so they figured that he was on the airplane or he was up and he did it, and he died, and the plane crashed, and we found the, uh, uh, the what's your name, in the, in the alley in a garbage can, a dumpster. <laughs> they said yesterday they found a passport in the, near the stadium that belonged to one of the, one of the, uh, of the, one I of the, uh, I I I I yes, right. yes. Same theory. theory. Same yes. theory. Same strip. Hundred, Just different characters. Strip. Yes. And people are buying it. Listen to the senators. They all then went up in arms and the governor. We ain't bringing no Syrians in here. It jumped from 23 to 32. Now it's damn near 50 states of senators crying like babies that they you don't bring no Syrians in here. And and believe it or not, the main killer I was trying to, to match his match him today. You keep your eyes open. The main guy that they're looking for, the so-called mastermind of what they're looking for, you, you keep seeing this picture. They say it's him. He's 27 years old. They can't figure out how he's so smart that he can out, out fox all these so-called high-tech generals and, and terrorists. And, uh, SWAT right. 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 Do you know where he was born and, and, and never, he's never been to Syria? You know where he come from? Belgium. Where? Belgium. Mm. Belgium. And you're going to, if you read from the Berlin Conference, Leopold III was the king of Belgium back in these 1880s. He killed over a million Arabs in order to stay in power. He was the king of Belgium. Now, let's try to put that together. Why do they keep screaming about ISIS? And now they're trying to say ISIS is so smart, they can go in any country on earth, recruit people that's been friendly and, and peaceful all their lives, and recruit them to do a major master plan to blow up something. And they're, they're over in Syria, and we're over here in the United States. Or we, they're in France, or they thousands of miles away, and they're making you believe that this 
this terrorist group known as ISIS is so intelligent, so powerful that they can do anything. Now you got the senators pounding their presidents from the Republican Party pounding on the table, calling Obama an idiot because he's trying to tell them it, it hasn't happened to us. He's, he's almost ready to say that it, the, the, the 9-11 was a farce. But I know he can't right. go there. Right. See, I know he can't go there. Uh, Trump almost went there when he was cutting up Jeb Bush. Said your daddy's a fool and your and your brother's a bigger idiot than your daddy. And he jumped up to my don't be talking about the Bush family and all that old crazy stuff. Now you got all of them talking about uh, we're gonna stop this. We're not bringing those people over here. Well, every one of them are aliens. They didn't come right. over here. Right. But nobody says it. See, I'm going back to what you're asking me these questions, and I'm saying to you that since the news media is, is, is in control, thank God we have the Internet where we can have programs like this to educate people. But you've got people that are screaming not to let them in, and they come in on a ship just like everybody else come in on the ship. None of them belong here. You see what I'm saying? They all stole mm-hmm. land when they came in here with the 14, 14, uh, 13 colonies. And nobody brings that up. See this? We you have a look caller. at what you're dealing with. Okay. Go ahead. Bring him in. Okay. Let's see who this is. 111. Uh, one, one. Uh, 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 we can't hear you. You're breaking up. Yeah. Let's try again. Uh, can okay. you hear me now? A little better. A little, a little better. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Go gonna ahead. get caught because the runs put some good points. Uh, can you hear me now, uh, Beverly? Yes. Go ahead. All right. All right. Uh, thank you for taking my call, Beverly. Uh, how are you doing, Brother Ron? I'm doing good, Fred. How are you? Yeah. I'm, how are uh, you? I'm, I'm touching a couple. Of, uh, yeah, I'm I'm yeah, fine, I'm, Ron. I'm fine over here. All right, you're over in the UK, I think. Are you in the UK? Yeah. Where are you That's going? Yeah. United yeah. Kingdom. That's right. I call in. Yeah, calling now and again, brother Ron. You know me. Uh, I'm going to add some points to what Ron's Ron's saying. When you're ready, I'll, I'll speak, Ron. But Ron's on fire. Ron's saying you've got to do this Berlin conference. Well, definitely. Yeah, we can't do that. And it's sweat. You're breaking up too much. We cannot make out anything you're saying. I can't understand it. I can't either. Maybe, yeah. Try to call back in again. Maybe you get a better connection. How about that? All right. I'll try to call back in again. Okay. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yep. Yep. Now, Ron, I hear myself in the background. I, you got? Do you have another um, monitor that's open? No, I have you and okay. you and I, and that's it. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't hear it back. now. Oh, okay. All right. Now you know. Let me get off the subject for one second, just to show you how crazy the people are, black and white. They're talking about the Mexicans being aliens coming into America. And they, and it's one of the, it was on the front burners prior to the Paris crisis, okay? Now, I'll give you one complete scenario, and you just explain to me how is this possible. Number one, people from Mexico and other countries come to America to work. They come here to make money so they can go back home. That's their first intent, and help their families. So you got all these grow- growers that own all of these uh, plantations, lettuce, tomatoes, onions, corn, whatever. They are hiring these aliens, unregistered aliens, by the hundreds to pick crops during the seasons. Nobody challenges them for bringing them in, but when they raid one of these growers' plantations, they round up the, 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 the Mexicans or the workers, 
and then put them, send them back to Mexico. You never hear any charges being brought against the growers. Why is that, Bev? If you want to stop the Mexicans from coming, stop hiring them to go to work. That's simple. Well, you it's don't just need- like the drugs. They they, they, they they arrest the, the the drug dealers on the corner, but they don't arrest the CIA and the yeah, other people that is bringing it in. Okay. Well, why can't you take that same explanation and put it into this racist uh, program that we're talking about tonight of why we don't do something against them when it's the same situation? We got the preachers against us. We got the Jack of uh, the Jack Lay preachers. We got the Boule. Everybody's talking about saying we shall overcome and want to march. When the people want to demonstrate, they say, "Well, we don't need to demonstrate anymore. We're gonna have a a prayer light, a prayer uh, a candlelight vigil." Okay, so if you can't see these agents that are working to keep this system going. You know, and we can't hardly blame it on the masses because they don't really get the word. Everybody's still asking me, why, when are you coming back on television? I say, well, I'm on the Internet every week. Oh, I don't have Internet. Oh, I I don't know how to get it. That type of thing. So, you know, it's it's difficult. That's all I can say. It's difficult to get the word out. We have another caller. All right. Go ahead. Um. Area code three one four seven six one. Hey, greetings, greetings uh, to you, uh, Miss Beverly, and Mister Martin. Greetings, Sire. Yes, sir, Sire. How are you? Yeah, all right, all right. Yes, uh, it's heading, it's, you heard right into what I was trying to address yesterday to you about uh, the people that are taking advantage of these nonprofit organizations when it comes to uh, marching, vigils, and all that. All that's done yep. with nonprofit organizations. Yeah, uh, we yes, have discovered yes. that they have a title through one through twenty nine. And uh, through one through twenty nine. And what it is is I'm gonna have to call okay. you and get more information. I'm, I want you to continue. Well, I'm gonna have to look call it up you on the <laughs> Yeah, everyone can Google it. It's called uh, projectspublication.org, nonprofit, nonprofit uh, C-type. And you can just put that in like that, and it'll come up. Okay. All right. I'm trying to do it right now. But the uh, projectspublication.org, nonprofit. Okay. Go ahead. I'm listening. Yes, well, uh, the comment based on how the people that's being afraid and everything like that. Yeah, it's, it's every, it, like I said, besides the young children, the young, the, the people who are adults and have been in the world long enough to the age of, uh, of, of I'll say, 20 years, have lived yep. life long enough to understand when they are affected by an individual, much, much less than, you know, a, a system. And you realize the privileges yourself. You realize when a person has per, uh, uh, perks and pet peeves more than you. You can see it happening every day, every day at our job. Yeah, so people yeah. ignore it because they, because our addiction is to what? To the pursuit of happiness, you see. Not that you shouldn't seek happiness, but we're in the middle of a war right now. And see, people don't want to, and they don't want to deal with that. And that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know it, it, you know it's 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 mad. It's it's mad. Seriously, it's right. really we we it's really that we really have to punch them in the face, and that's what really nobody don't want to do. And and the reason why we're not ready, you know, because we're not preparing our children. Think about it. They prepare prepare their children, the little Nazi boys and all that. They prepare them at a young age, to learn how to shoot a gun, a rifle at five years old. You see. They yep, are already prepared. Yep. They are already learning the, the military uh, 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 inclination to know how to handle yourself, such as tools, weapons, tools. 
Just like you use your tools in your home to build a home. Yeah. And see, we don't talk about science. We talk to talk about this gun stuff, not having the gun and all that old stuff. And not only just that, other things. You can learn all types of weaponry. And that's what we need to be talked about, like in some blog talks. We can talk about stuff like that. We don't talk about we're going to kill nobody, but we can talk about how we can use weaponry or organic weaponry just because we can't get that type of weaponry. There's all kinds of ways to do things. Yes. Yes. I, I, I we have to be prepared or we're in trouble. Yeah. We have to be prepared okay. no matter what state, what's supposed to happen. You know, what people believe is, you still have to be prepared on this earth. Yes. All I ask is to I have to be prepared. That was nothing. Preparation showed you. If they wasn't prepared, they lost. That's why our ancestors lost, because of some unpreparation. There were some that did prepare, but that was sold out by other people. Yes. Well, well we can The same thing just out. The same thing. Yes. By the line, the, the our whole population. Go yep. ahead. I, I it's the people. It's, it's us. The elite, gonna, the, the aristocracy going to be what, who they're going to be. They executing every day what they need to do. They, they got their plan going on. It's the people that don't have their plan going on. And they fight too much amongst each other based on all the duality antics that they have behind it. I will be the first to agree with you, Sadir. But you got to also understand that they have plenty of of a, a data and research in order to keep us in bondage, keep us ignorant. And we have sure. people that are high school dropouts. Real reality, Ron. I understand. I'm not reality. arguing. We don't understand that some of us have to. I agree. No, but what I'm saying is, what it really is, we have to die for the next generation to have its birth, to be rebirthed. People don't want to do that. They don't understand what it takes to push forward. If you care about this life, that's why people don't want to give it up. When you give it up for a real cause, it it births a new generation. Our ancestors knew that. It's people doing that today in other races. Yeah. But aren't you asking for a hell of a lot when you ask people to give up their lives? That's not a that's not an easy thing. To well, do. it's not even have to ask them that. You shouldn't even okay, have to ask them I, that. That's the whole point of it. Zaire, we can talk about this all day on paper, but I'm telling you now, nobody's gonna step forward and say, "I'll be the first to go." So let's not kid ourselves. Well, this is what I'm saying. Well, see, that's the whole point. We should. It's not about you wait for it. When you're one mind, when you're one mind, and you know what you need to do. You you wouldn't have to have one person say it. You know the you know that this is going to be death. All right. You well, you know it. either way it goes. That's what it's already set for us anyway. So I mean, I bet people better pick their uh, uh, preparations of death because it's happening anyway. Okay. You see. Well, we're police killing everybody, black people killing each other, poison, everything. It's happening anyway. Yeah. But don't tell me they don't know how to kill. They kill each other. Yep. Well, See? when you come up with a plan to make it work, uh, let me know. Right now, I, I, I don't know anybody going to step forward. And I don't think you're going to step forward and no, say I'm, I'm going to go. Okay? So it's easy to talk about well, it. Well, well, I'm going to step forward. I'm already there. Doing it. Okay. All right, well that's good. Then then we got it. We got it. We're starting on the program. All right. So let us move on. We're gonna Correct. move on. And I I agree with you. I'm not I'm not arguing with you. I'm just trying to tell you that it's not a an easy process. I've been organizing all my no, life. No, 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 definitely and, not. And, and, and the organizational uh, position we need to take it hasn't always been bloodshed. When I was in the auto plant, you didn't have Correct. to worry about Dying, but you had to give up something, you know. And then, we, then, then what happened? Everybody's ducking and dodging. They don't want to do it. Okay. So I, I understand clearly what you're talking about, and I know the system understands it. But, so as long as what I'll say it, before I get out, we actually oh. doing that anyway, Ron. You and Bear, all us that's doing this on blogs, we still we it's like we doing that anyway. 
We're giving up our time not, and our lives for the cause. Yep. But it's not organized the way you're. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's good enough. I agree. Oh, just not, <coughs> All right. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, Rob, yep. we have another uh, other caller from the UK. Uh, Let's see if we can hear him. Hello, okay. one, one, one. Uh, Sorry, Beverly. I yes, we can hear you. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness I'm getting food. Let's see my call again there, Beverly. How are you doing, Ron? I'm we good. hear I'm you. Good. Yep, go ahead and put your piece in. Yes, I hear you. Yeah, oh, yeah, more than probably got probably too much to say. Uh, first things first, you're right about on the France thing. It runs spot on on the France thing. Uh, my friend's parents are over at the moment. Now, France as a country, it's quite a multi divert Well, I don't like using race and all this thing because they're all loose false constructs and then black Bible codes, as Brother Ronald will already know. Um, but it's quite a, a diverse country, and they've got a lot of people from all over the place there. Now, obviously in Europe, I don't know if, if it's reported on the news over in the States, but obviously in Europe, there's a big thing about ISIS at the moment uh, with Syria, and there's a lot of refugees that are crossing from Turkey. They're coming from Turkey, coming to Europe and Germany. And when this event kicked off, and Robin will have probably mentioned this, um, the fact that the big leaders at this big event, and um, it's already been pre-planned. They actually had all the French security services already at the event. It was like they're, they're already pre-planned. The world's absolutely right. They knew they were going to do this, and they've just got the people into a big state of massive fear, running around screaming and all the rest of it, and this is there because the French are very well known for standing up against the priesthood, the church, the, the Jesuit order, and they kicked the Jesuits out in, I think it was in the 1700s or 1800s. So it's the same with Germany, with um, Adolf uh, Schugelgruppe, or Hitler's, they refer to him as, um, with the pro- 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 Protestant movement. It's the same thing. Anybody who stood up against the, the priests of the church, would, they send the missionaries in and get them struck down. That's why Germany never had an army after the Second World War. It's the same thing the French. They've always stood up, stood, to some degree, and spoke the truth. And so like Ron says, they're trying to shut people down for speaking the truth. And Ron's right. They've been going around... Uh, in, in Paris right now to put the martial law li- martial law in uh, Francis Hollande who's Jesuit alumni yeah. trained they put the martial law in runs right and they're going around they're smashing people's houses in going all over the place but the thing is the French have been bombing so called Syria Syria so Syria and then yeah. those refugees have been coming across anyway and they've got deals within the European Parliament to let them all in now in the UK is a, they're trying to get a thousand Syrians in by this Christmas coming so they're planning these events to happen anyway. So if the same thing happened over here, it will happen over here. With, uh, the same thing with them blowing them up. Now, I'm going to mention this specifically. They, um, the guy that masterminded this that Ron was referring to, a few weeks ago before this happened, um, the, this has been well planned. I, think they, well, I don't think I know to train these people outside the country. Then they let them into France. Okay, they train them in Syria, because that's what's been going on. They let them into France under the guise of so-called refugees. It's all planned anyway. They raided this base, and they put the detonators out the base, and all, all, the, all the ammunition they needed, and then they made the bombs, and then just did what they did anyway. So the intelligence services to the mop that opens, as soon as you know that things have been going for a military and gone missing, that should have been mopped up anyway. They should have been on high, on high alert. So the whole thing's been pre-programmed, and it's all... It's all a, a, a false flag and, and getting the people wrapped up anyway. So that was a little piece. I'll stop there before I say anything else. Just let Ron comment. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I think with your accent and calling from so far away, I, I had to pick the words that you were saying there, and I, I think I understood what you were saying. And you are right because we're, you and I are saying the same thing. Uh, it's, 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 it's a circus what's going on, and you've got people in charge that really you can take it uh, two ways. Either they don't know what they're doing or they're, 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 it's a joke. Now that's, that's an ugly thing to say, but they, they want to put fear in the people so they can control them, and that goes back to you, Beverly, of what we said earlier and what I was trying to explain to you. They have to keep the fear in you in order for them to control you. The more fear, the less they have to do to keep you under control. You you follow me? Yeah. 
That's why I say okay. it's the same situation. Okay, but but you but you say it as if you're upset with it, and I'm saying it that it works. So why? Yeah, you, but you know, I, I'm upset. I'm upset because they when they put their strategy together, they have sat down and they have said, okay, we're going to do A, B, C. They set everything up before they do the fear part. We don't have okay. no strategy to combat that fear, that, that, their strategies. Everything what they do, you they have sat down. Hmm? Well, what would you, would you like? Say? What would you like to see done to combat their strategy? What would you suggest to, to be done? Well, what for one we thing, do? you have to take their baby, our babies, out of their institutions. I mean, you, we we keep going to the same people, our enemies, and we keep going to them for our food, our education. I, I mean, to me, that's that's insanity. Okay. So how are you going to set up a school? Now, remember the lady in Chicago. I'm looking at a, uh, ooh, I almost called her name. I think her first name was Marva. She was mm-hmm. in Chicago, opened up her own school during the Civil Rights era back mm-hmm. in the 60s. And mm-hmm. she had uh, kindergarten kids speaking two and three languages. They were doing algebra and calculus and all that. They shut her down. You hear me? They shut her down. But that's what I'm. You but that's what I'm saying. We, we they just come in. They take. They do what they want, and we just we have no defense. So what they did is the first strategy looked like to me is that they set up a strong army. Strong. They have to have that to come in and push your door down. So you got to look at them like a, a gang. Okay. All right. So we look at we we definitely look at the police as being a gang because they are doing exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Okay. So where is the combat? Where is the where? What can you do to stop it? We don't have anyone elected in positions. When we do get one, like the like the like the president. He's talking more white than most white people talk. You got churches that fill up every Sunday where you can be educating your children or setting up schools in these churches. They're all there for the good of putting money in their pockets or trying to make you be good and take a, 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 a forgive so you can go to heaven. So I don't know why you keep saying that when, when it's so much combat against you they shut you down. Right, that's what I'm saying. We, if, if okay. we, I mean, I'm saying the same thing. You saying we overpowered, but what do okay. we do? I mean, we've been overpowered for centuries. When, when are we going to come up with a strategy to get out of that? Let me just say, I have been since I've been in Detroit. My my mission, personal mission, has been to raise the consciousness of the people. If you don't free them, you can't free yourself. Now, I've learned that as, as an individual. You may have a different idea or a different plan. There are people that are interested in being free. I get uh, emails. You get emails. You get people that are calling in that are doing certain things, trying to free themselves. They're, they're fighting for justice in courts where they normally wouldn't go to court. They're realizing that the whole process of the United States of America, Inc., is nothing more than a corporation where there's no money and we're trying to learn the process of redemption so we don't have to pay our our little dollars that we do get. We don't have to pay for stuff. We can write uh, instruments like everybody else. Uh, And and the more... Okay, go ahead. And then... But then from... I'm reading and and I'm looking at it, this pattern. Okay, once you start to win with them, once you start to outthink them and outmaneuver them, then this is when they come with the big guns. Yes. They just destroy yes. everything. That that's that that's their pattern. Yes, that's their pattern. But you got to figure out. Oh, uh, that's what I'm saying. Out. Where? Is, hmm. Use your. You got to since you know that. 
then you need to figure out a way to get around that. Now I'm at exactly. I'm where I am I I'm where I am today because I've went through basically m- most of the crap coming out of the sixties when I belonged to the organization called Drum. I've experienced more than most people will never experience in their life. So I know better than to make mistakes or do certain things that will bring out the big guns. I'm on a, a program now, especially with the, with the birth certificate. I haven't seen any flaws in it yet. Not to say they're not. Not to say that they're going to bust. But we had a caller last night who was doing all of the proper things in court, but the problem was, and I tried to explain it to her, she was a very nice lady. She was still a slave. She's not allowed to do those things that she thinks she should get away with in court because she's still a slave. And she realized it after we talked and discussed it last night on the program. So mm-hmm. I'm, I, guess, I guess what I'm saying is a trial and error is where we are, okay? We need an archive. Ron March, I'm 75. I got a lot of knowledge, historical knowledge that I've lived through. We had a brother that left here, General Baker. He had labor. That brother was a genius in labor. We didn't get an opportunity to set up a library. We had another brother named Bobby L. right here uh, 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 from the Moorish Nation in Detroit. We never got an opportunity to take all his paperwork and create an archive or a historical museum with all of his information. See, these are things that we have to do, but we don't have the money to set it up. Because it takes money to start it, and it takes money to continue it. See what I'm saying? And they got us in such a bind where we have to depend on them for everything. That's the key. So, That's the key. Yes. Well, how many people know that, Beth? And most of them, that they don't even care as long as they got a job, a car, and a girlfriend. They happy. So to get well, their no. attention, to get their attention, you have to wait until the system gets them, and then they'll start calling. Hey, Ben, I, I I looked at one of your tapes, and you mentioned something, and I'm trying to remember you. Well, I don't know if doing that, but you say, well, you did, and I I need you because I got to go to court tomorrow or next week. You see what I'm saying? This is what I'm getting. So. I, you know, I see uh, it's slow, and, and it's not going to be easy because we we're 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 fighting the, the greatest power on earth, Beth. You got to remember that. Uh, no. And they right. And they spend and they spend more money on psychological warfare than they do on uh, a hardware warfare on us. Because all they need is pistols from the cops, and every time the cops show, look how they show the pictures of the cops beating us. And then it's and all of that is justified. Whoever heard of such shit? That's put, a man but, that's put, but that's putting that fear in. But what I'm yes, noticing they. is they have strategy. We don't have any strategy. We 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 reacting, but we don't come up with just like you just <laughs> gave that example about you should have did those with the archives with those powerful men. You know, yes. that strategy, it should have been a str- We don't have any strategy that we put together before we make any uh, decisions. They they, right. they they put their strategy together, and then they move on it. Well, I don't know how to answer you when you say things like that, because we're paying taxes to keep ourselves in bondage. So the only, thing, only place that we have free money is in the churches. And they're watching those ministers like a hawk. If they do anything to the contrary, most of them are ignorant anyway. They, you know, think they're going to heaven. God done told them to be preachers, all that old left-handed malarkey. But, but, but th- that's where the free money goes every Sunday. They're getting X number of dollars to, to take care of their business, okay? So how are you going to go to one of those churches and talk them into it? Maybe that'd be a good mission for you. You go in there and start organizing the churches. And tell them we they don't want to. They don't want to hear that. <laughs> They'll burn me at the stake. 
They'll call me the witch, the wicked witch from the east. <laughs> they already call me that anyway. <laughs> Well, you answered your own question, and I'll, I'll leave it alone. Let's try to get <laughs> You're okay. right. You're totally correct. You know. Well, let's try to get back because there was a movie made in 1958, I believe it was. It was called The Battle of Algiers. I had an opportunity in 1960, about five or six, to see the movie. The movie was banned in America. Can you believe that? I had to go yeah, in the basement. I had to go in the basement of a church. A, uh, uh, I won't even call it a Catholic church, but it's a church right downtown on Woodward by the expressway. It's across the street from Fox Theater. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, and we went in the basement and we saw the movie. Very, very interesting. It really turned me around. And I see why they banned it. Because they were talking about France and they were talking about um, the Algerians, how they were keeping the Algerians in line. Now, in one of the, one of the let me read just one paragraph first. One of the paragra- uh, one of the uh, articles that I have tonight, it talks about uh, the first country that tried to get out from under France. Let me see what, there we go. Let me get it in here real quick. Let's see what, yep. Yep, there we go. Okay. G- uh, Guinea, G-U-I-N-E-A, Guinea. Is that how you pronounce that? Anyway, it's an African country on the uh, Atlantic Ocean coastline. It demanded its independence from France colony rule in 1958. The French unleashed their fear with more than 3,000 leaving the country, taking their entire property. They gave them their independence and left with 3,000 French and they took everything. In addition, they destroyed everything that couldn't be taken, destroying schools, nurses, nurseries, public administration buildings, cars, books, medicine, research institution instruments, tractors were crushed and sabotaged. Animals killed and food in warehouses were burned or poisoned. In effect, they were sending a message. Listen carefully, Beth. They were sending a message to all other colonies that the consequences of rejecting France would be very high. That answers everything you've been saying right there. In the United States in 1958, Eisenhower, it doesn't matter because you got Obama in the White House now talking about terrorists and talking about uh, 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 terrorists and, 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 and killing and what have you. And he's been bombing Syria and Afghanistan and, and, and uh, Iraq ever since he's been in office. So who is the terrorist? <laughs> He's been using, now the reason that you don't hear about it is because he's not using, uh, losing American pilots or American soldiers. He said, I'm going to bring them home. Everybody got them, start clapping. Okay. But he increased the drones. They're bombing yeah. every day. So how can you bomb people every day? They leave to get, not to get bombed. They're searching for a place to live. And then you say you can't come in because you're a terrorist. Wait a minute. Something wrong with that. I was minding my own business at home when you started bombing my house. You killed my wife, my babies, all of my crops. My land is gone. Everything is gone. I don't have nowhere to live. I'm trying to get to some place so I can survive. 
And now you tell me I can't go there because I got to be vetted, what they call vetted, and it's going to take 18 months to two years for me to get cleared so I can live again. Now, Beverly, you can't even visualize that happening to you. And just no. the thought of it, and just the thought of it happening, you're going to try and do everything you can not to let it happen. This is what I've been trying to explain. They do these types of things. Colonialism. So, base. <clears throat> Go ahead. So basically, what he did was he didn't use the uh, military. He used uh, Blackwater, which is now ISIS. Yes. Yes, I, I know what you just said, and I agree. Yes, you certainly did. And nobody says a word. And then, and then you still have these congressmen. See, I did a program on nationalization of early America, 1795, 1750, 17, you know, early, early, early of, of a nationalization. And the Europeans were so unruly, they were terrorists, that they had to set up rules in order for them to get here. And one of the rules that they taught us about, or better yet, they wrote about, was you had to be a good moral citizen for 14 years before you could even fill out an application. And the application had to be signed by the President of the United States. Now, 200 years later, they're blaming the same thing on the Syrians who are not even over here. And they didn't come in and steal nothing because they they don't have anything and they don't want them here. You see what I'm saying? This is is madness. And nobody says anything about it. That's the part that blows my mind. I mean, nobody even mentions it. Now, Bill Maher's show, you might get them to talk about it a little bit on the Bill Maher show. But basically, Mm -hmm. nobody talks about it. You know what I mean? Right. So, all right, we get, we, uh, let's take a break. Engineers trying to let me know it's time to take a break. Let's take a break, Bev. You have any phone calls? Okay. Uh, no, I don't have any phone calls right now. Uh, let me make sure that I have not lost him. Okay, so give me a minute here. Let's see if Ron's ready. Yes, now you uh, Yep. I'm here, Beverly. Beverly? Beverly? Yes, can you, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Very good. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's stay in Africa now and deal with France and what they're doing to the African people. And remember, I told you, keep looking at the news. They're they're saying uh, uh, ISIS. They're saying Syria. But every time they show the guy they're looking for who is the mastermind of this operation, so-called mastermind, he's from... Uh, uh, Belgium, and so Belgium has a, a history of fighting France. France has done some ugly things to Africa, the continent of Africa. Colonialism has an enduring strain on in Africa's history. The economic oppression continues to exist. The article by you know I can't pronounce these names. He's a peace advocate. Uh, from uh, uh, from South Africa, he addressed these these issues. The article called attention to an ongoing practice by former African countries are forced to pay colonial tax to France, even today. Colonial tax. Now, colonial tax came from 1884-85 when they set that conference up, that Berlin Conference. And they were supposedly given their freedom in all the news medias uh, in 1950. But what they're saying is 
they are still being taxed today. In fact, France continues to thrive on the practice, which extracts approximately $500 billion from African countries each year. This out, out and out rape, murder, and just, just stealing. $500 billion a year from Africa. As the writer notes, the outrageous tax deprives African economies of much needed funds and it excavates, excavates uh, debt, debt and strips their authority over their own natural resources and reserves. But the detriment are more than just economics. As this ills, as the ills of colonialism manifest in the social way that are equally devastating to the dignity and identity of the African people. One of the first presidents of the Republic of Togo, instead of signing a colonialized continuation of the pact, uh, you remember the president, De Gaulle, instead agreed to pay an annual debt to France for the so-called benefits of French colonialism. Colonialism. This prevented the French from uh, destroying the country before it left. However, the amount estimated by France was so big that the reimbursement of the so-called colonial debt was close to 40% of the country's budget in 1963. That's how early, 1963. The president's dream was to build an independent and self-sufficient, self-reliant country. But the French had him killed by a sergeant who was given $612 bounty by the French embassy. History has shown that despite years of African fighting to liberate themselves, France repeatedly used many ex-foreign legionnaires to carry out coups against elected presidents. This included, uh, I can't pronounce his name, who was assassinated, who was uh, this, this, this Jean of, of Bosco, he assassinated David Daco, the first president of Central African Republic. In the last 50 years, a total of 67 coups was, has occurred in 26 African countries, of which 16 are ex-French colonies. This indicates that France is desperate to hold on to whatever land it has in Africa. March 28, 2008, former French President Jacques Dirac, Chirac said, without Africa, France will slide down into the rank of a third world power, and that Chirac's predecessor, Francisco Mia, and had, had already prophesied in 1957 that without Africa, France will have no history in the 21st century. What do you think about that, Biff? Well, it sounds, that's again, they used a strategy. It sounds like a bully that keep taking the, this kid's lunch money and, and homework and the kid not doing anything because he feel overpowered. He feel like he can't do anything with this bully. He calls his brothers to help him fight, and the bully beat them up and killed them. Okay. So, so do, do I hear a a uh, explanation, or can I hear, or do I hear some way to stop this madness? <laughs> I feel like that the the young the young person. Uh, needs to get him a group together, come up with a strategy to deal with this bully. The bully keep okay. killing, keep doing a coup on him. He 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 got to put some people together that they can't infiltrate. All right, where was where he got to do something? Yeah, 
Where are they going to get the arms? You think they're going to need uh, machine guns, hanging aids, airplanes? They're going to need everything. Because when France comes down, they do not take prisoners. And anybody yeah, and that, and, and, and and anybody and that go ahead, yeah, you go ahead. And and the and the main problem is that all of this is funded by the banks. You hear the banks again. Okay. All right. So I mean, I, when you say when you talk like this, I don't know what to say because uh, it's been going on for years. And not yeah. only are we getting dumber, if, if if that's a good way of putting it, they're getting smarter, and they're doing more devastation, okay? We're over here celebrating a black president because you bring up Obama being a punk. Uh, women will attack me. I've had that done before. Don't talk about my president, okay? He's one that's doing all of this madness in Africa. He's part of it. So if you're talking about somebody coming up to fight back, they're going to need arms. They're going to need a way to fight. There's another movie out, and I saw it the other night. It's an old movie called Dogs of War, D-O-G-S, Dogs of War. You need to see that, Beverly. I will. You need to see that. It's a very good action movie, and it's very well put together. It covers exactly what you're saying. The English wanted some land. They had to do a coup, and the president had set up such a uh, uh, defense that most freedom fighters, so-called freedom fighters, were scared to go in, but they got hold of a guy that went in, and the story starts right there how he had to get the, the arms and you need to see it and you and yes you need to see that okay and it's an old movie uh you probably could buy it for nine dollars if you found it in uh, Walmart or some place like that you know that mm-hmm. nine ninety nine a beautiful movie tell it tells the story just like that uh I have copies of Battle of Algiers that uh I, I'll put it on my website, uh, Battle of Algiers. People can can purchase it if they like to get it. Because it's not, it's, <laughs> let me just say, it's not as easy as as you make it sound. Not only oh, I know it's to not. Do what they're doing, but to even organize to just to live every day, you know? And they're, and they're stealing, everybody's stealing from Africa. And they're putting in all types of diseases in Africa. The oil in Nigeria, they got a female president now of, I don't know. They told me when I was in Ghana, if if you see a war in Africa and they're fighting, chopping off legs and arms and legs, that is a good battle. And I looked at him. I said, brother, what the hell are you talking about? He said, that only lets you know it's a black on black struggle, and that's what we need black on black to get rid of these sellouts and what have you. But when you see people getting wiped out with tanks, machine guns, that's the first clue that the European is in there, and they want something exactly. that's there. So they show up with the arms. So go back to what you're asking for this group of young cats to start organizing, they got to get some guns and, and stuff from somebody. And, you know, these little 22s and 45s and, and 9 millimeters, that ain't going to cut it with this new type of stuff they have. I got a caller on, on uh, calling. Oh, you, you have not right. been issued a social security number. Into zeros in box five of this form. Yep. I don't, that's somebody, uh, I don't know who that is. I thought I had a caller. I got another one here. Yep. That's Andre. Yep. All right. Okay. So, Beth, I'm going to go down here to the last paragraph that says uh, the French, 
Yeah, this paragraph I wanted. Where the, the banks, oh, yeah, here we go. Despite the two main African banks, there's two banks in Africa. Uh, always African always. Banks, yep. They have no monetary policies of their own. They just got the name African Bank. All right, African, I'm looking for the title. I don't see it. In fact, France allows them to uh, uh, access only 15% of the money in their own given in, in any given year for the banks to operate. If there is none, if there is a need for more, they need to borrow the extra money from their own 65% from the French Treasury at commercial rates. So just that alone starves out the country. You, you get it? Yeah. It's not it's not an easy process. I know. Been yeah, added, didn't, they, didn't, go ahead. didn't the uh didn't the the Africans try to make their own money? Just like uh Sudan who Sudan his name, Hussein didn't he make was making his own money? <laughs> yes, they did. And what happened to him? <laughs> the bully squashed them like an ant. Yes, yes, yes. And 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 let's not forget that uh, Gaddafi. If you look and look up any government policies of Umar Muammar Gaddafi, it was a paradise, a heaven to live in Libya. Yes. If you grad, if you just just one process, if you graduated from high school. They would give you twenty five thousand dollars a year until you got married, so you could go to college and and become you know uh, have an income. And just one one process that I recall, gas was a uh, forty nine cent a gallon. Okay, and the United States through the news media made us think that there was a coup. People were angry, and Gaddafi was evil, and that the the coup overtook Gaddafi and threw him out of office. Now I've been told since then that the film they used was not even Libyan people; they were from another region altogether. That they were showing the American people, so we would support getting rid of Gaddafi. And let's not forget. Of uh, Louis Farrakhan going over there in the 60s, Gaddafi gave him $40 million. Yeah. And the United States told uh, uh, Farrakhan if he brings it back to America, uh, it would be an act of war. And they, would, <laughs> and they would bomb the Libyan people for acts of war. So, you know, and, and, and the United States spends more money per year on military hardware than damn near all the other countries put together. Just but, to show but, the, the, but the three heads of power is the Pope, England, and, and the United States. And the United States is the military arm of that power, correct? Okay. So what's your point? So they got the, so they they the, got more power than anybody with the military because that's what they are. They the military arm. All right. So how is a handful of young cats going to buck and and be successful in getting back at them? What can they, they gotta do come to come up? They got to come up with some kind of strategy. They got to go to a hole. They got to tap into some power from somewhere and come up with some strategy. And I'll do the Remember the movie Bumpy? Remember uh, Bumpy? Uh, remember that movie? I forgot the name of it. What about the numbers in New York back in the day, and they was taking over their territory, and they came up with a strategy. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. They got to outthink uh, them. Yeah, okay. To a certain point. So, all right. So where is Bumpy at today? You know, that was... Oh, that, I don't, you, 
That was back you know, in the 20s. I know, I know. I know. But this is uh, Don King was a powerhouse back with the Muhammad Ali era. He, okay. he fought the mafia off. They threatened to do uh, certain, a lot of things to him. He went out mm-hmm. in their neighborhood and threatened them the way they were threatening us. But you haven't heard from Don King. He's alive, but you haven't, I, I think he's alive, but you haven't heard from him uh, in, a, in a good while. And whatever he mm-hmm. did with his money, and I'm not trying to get in his pocket, but you're not allowed by this government to take any monies that you are lucky, luckily can make and take it back to the community to promote freedom in the commu- communities. Right. See, they know more about freedom than you do and, and I do. Yeah. So they have been in, yeah. they've been free. So anytime they see that, uh, the whole program of the FBI, even getting organized back in the 30s, it was organized for the sole purpose of watching black folks do not let a leader come up among them. If they scream for a leader, you give it to them. The government will give them leaders. You're not allowed to come up with your own leader. Now, what is that? Thing? Well, Ron... How do you get yes. out this matrix then? Is it a way out, or are you just stuck in the cube box? <laughs> I think the way out is what I'm is One of the ways out is what I'm doing, and that is I can't be free unless I free my people. So I got to move on the, on the same plane as the masses. So I'm trying to use this facility between you and I to get the word out for those that are of like minds so we can move forward and start building a nation of our own. That's what I think. That's how you're going to get out of it. And I believe in my creator that that's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon because I see a trend in my life. I see a trend that is letting me know that we're closer to freedom than we have ever imagined, and that is this. The more we get to, the closer we get to freedom, the more gobbledygook, I'm going to call it gobbledygook, the European will come up with. There was never an ISIS in the 60s. There was surely no ISIS, uh, uh, anything like ISIS, or even uh, 9-11 back in the 20s, okay? We were building our nation to come forward. They started doing things to keep us in place, so they brought the Ku Klux Klan out, and they only come out when we start screaming for freedom. We scream for freedom when we lose our jobs, when they start laying us off. So it's a it's a chain reaction. That's why the European is in so much trouble today, because he can't get the economy to work. But the more the economy don't work, the more we wake up to the fact that we're not who we think we are. In other words, the uh, last one's hired, the first one fired. You know, you got stuff happening to educated professors and PhDs and, and master people who thought that freedom was already here, and they're catching hell like crazy right now because of racism in America. They turned, they leached the uh, uh, police department against us. And look at what happens with that. I talked about that lady named Dorothy Blunt. She was a professor at one of the Texas colleges in journalism. She was jogging in front of her house a couple of weeks ago. Cops came out and gave her the third degree. After she thought about it, she said, I don't need, from, from what I'm doing and where I'm at, I don't think I have to take this kind of, of, of malarkey from these people. Okay, so then her own people turned against her. Did I did I do that on your show? Or was that my show that we talked about this lady named Dorothy Bland? Are you familiar with that are. story? Mm-hmm. You remember? No. Okay. No. I can send you the, the video. If you okay. Google Dorothy Bland, Texas professor, 
it'll come up, and they'll show you where two white cops, um, she was jogging, and they, they, they questioned her, and they did it in a strange way. I saw racism and everything they did, but she thought it was a good stop until she got home and thought about it because they took her Social Security number. They wanted to know what her address was, asked her why she didn't have ID on her in a junk in a in a jogging suit. There was a lot of a lot of stuff. But anyway, she was a boule. She was more of a AKA. She thought she was above that. And after she thought about it, she said, Damn, they treat me like the rest of them. I thought that was a very good move. The whole process was by me. But why now? Why they are letting uh, treating the boule and and uh, the middle class white people are getting treated the way that we have been is because they don't need those people. They into the machine age now, so they use the machines and technology. Yep, yep, that's very true. But they still have to keep the. They, they can only win if they create racism. And you got to remember that. So they have to divide and conquer. So they have to do better with the Europeans than they do with the blacks. So, yes, what you're saying is true, but whatever jobs those machinery are put out, the Europeans are going to get those jobs, not you and I. You dig it? You got people that say yeah. they'll never go on welfare. Well, heard of such madness, but that's what they were trained to believe. Their daddy didn't go, and their granddaddy didn't go on welfare, and they ain't gonna go on welfare. That's the craziest thing they ever heard in my life. But they believe in the system, and such that they're not supposed to be put on welfare. That's for black people, poor people. I'm not poor. I'm a I'm a white European, especially a white man. If you if a white man cannot make it in a, in the United States, he's less than a man. Any white, any European that can't make it in the United States of America Inc. is less than a man because the system was set up for him. Not only did they tell black people they couldn't vote, they told white women they couldn't vote. So the only thing that's really free in the United States of America Inc. is a European male. And for them to get on TV and whine like little girls, afraid of this and afraid of that, it's, it's disgraceful. The most powerful nation on earth, they talk about we don't want them over here because they might do something. They're, they're terrorists. But you, your, your history has shown all you do is bomb. So go over there and bomb. Kill up all them people. And that's what uh, that, that fool is saying, oh, the two of them, Carson and Trump. And Carson is just disgraceful. But he's saying the same thing Trump said. We need to the bomb them. Don't let no Muslims come in America. Oh, I don't even want to go through it again. That's, that's crazy. But, but so to me, are, that's part of their strategy. I told you they use strategy. All of that is part of the strategy. But can't you see where that strategy is going to destroy them from within? How can they say they're only going to let Muslims in? You already got the Detroit's already twenty percent Muslims, Islamic. What kind of strategy could that be? That ain't no strategy. Well, they feel like that twenty percent they can handle that. They've been handling them since the sixties or seventies. Well, I don't think they can handle it. I think they're idiots and the and the ones that are Masonic and know the ropes are gonna tell them so that you're idiots, shut up. Go over there and sit down. We'll handle this. That's what's going to happen. And that's what Obama's telling them right now with all this governors talking about we don't want them to come in our country. <laughs> you got to look what I do. I look at the big picture. I don't look at the little picture. You got all Dearborn over 50% Arabic. And you talking about don't let Arabs in? The, the, the whole economic system of Detroit is Arabic controlled. And you're saying... That's their strategy. No, it's not. Because if they don't but, sell but it to the people, Arab, But the Arabs don't have control of the borders here. 
I mean, they 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 here, but they can't uh, make the you this this corporation let their family over here. All right, if, all right. If the Arabs don't sell us food every day, if they don't sell you food, how are you going to eat, man? But the corporation not concerned about us. The corporation and their communities, they they supermarkets is ran by their people. We don't but control not... the border. All right. I don't know where you are. When they have riots, when they have riots, and they are not riots, when they have a catastrophe like a storm or what have you, don't you know those okay. suburbs? Tell you you cannot come in their community and and buy up their food because they won't have enough for themselves. You need to stay in your own communities. That's a, that's understandable. Why they're not going to let you drive out to Farmington, if, uh, you know, in a, in a time of a crisis and start buying up all the food that, out there because you want to eat in but Detroit. That, but, but that's what I'm t- saying, Ron. The Arabs are right. in our community. The whiteies don't care about them shutting us down. We don't control the borders. They control the borders. All right. The whitey is concerned about the banks making money. Would you Would you agree to that? Yes, yes, I agree to that. Right. So if the Arabs don't sell us food, how are the banks going to make any money? All you got to do is go to any bank on Monday mornings, when they open up, you're going to see two things, Arab merchants and black jack leg ass preachers putting money in the bank. Yeah, you're right. I see that. Okay. So you think they're going to, they're going to run the Arabs out so they take come to the bank and put money in? No, they're not. They got to keep the Arabs here because they can't come back because they know what happened to them. We ran the whitey out, we ran the Jew out. Now we think the Arab is our brother because we're talking about the population, all that bull crap. But, but the whiteys is back in. Worse than we are. So what? The whiteys is back in the city. Yeah, they sure are. They but they're downtown. Be. They're downtown, basically downtown, number one. Number two, if there are any Arab stores in any new white communities, I guarantee you they won't be there next year because the Arab, the white folks are not going to buy from the Arabs. That's why the Arabs are all in Detroit. I've, I've been right. in the market. I know what goes on. And I'll tell the Arab in a minute, why don't you move out there in Bloomfield? They look at me and laugh. Say we can't make no money in Bloomfield. They can make all the money they want down here in Detroit. Not only do they sell goods, they can sell drugs, clothes, Hang grenades, it don't matter. They sell everything down here in the, in Detroit. You don't do that out in the suburbs. And the white folks are only going to buy something like pop or something that's on sale. They'll buy, they'll tear the door down getting it if it's on sale. But they're not going to they're not going to shop at an Arab store. If you know any Arab, just ask them. I guarantee you, they're not going to shop at an Arab store. But you know, I'm, st- <clears throat> but I'm starting to see them out in the. I'm starting to see them and the Indians in the suburbs, in the gas stations, and things like that. Are they living out there? Or are they running? Are they no, run, are they no, own the gas they, they they own the gas stations. Oh, I'm starting okay. to see more and more of them. All right. Well. I, I, but I, won't, I haven't seen it. I'm not saying it's not there. But if it is, right. it's changing. So if, it, if yeah. that's the case, I guarantee you that the white folks are moving further out or they're moving back into they, Detroit. They are moving into Detroit. Yes. And, and once they get here, once they set up communities, that air yeah. gas station and that air store is going out of business. I guarantee you that. All right. So they're not I can see that. I can see that. Yes, they're not going to buy. We don't care. If we want a beer, we'll buy it from anybody. Yeah. But Eric will tell you in a minute, if you know one, he can't make any money in, out there in the, in the suburbs. Because white folks, number one, do not buy nowhere near what black folks buy. 
And if you know anything about marketing, you'll see that the air of party stores in Detroit, they have space for rich liquor. I can't even think mm-hmm. about stop drinking. You go out in the suburb and ask for cut us off, they tell you we don't have any. Yeah. They don't buy it because folks don't buy that. They buy some milk. Okay? Yeah, so that, they, that, they that, enter the whiskey. Yes. Or that cheap yeah. vodka, that, a lot of that old cheap stuff. You dig? Yeah. But the bottom line, I guess what I'm, I'm trying to get to you is economics is the key to everything yes. that happens. Yes. I agree. And once Okay, so once you look at what's going on, you'll see that it all affects us right here in Detroit because they're doing the same thing over there that they've done to us or doing to us right here in the United States. But they can hide it more in the United States because and because we they had to bring a new constitution. See, everybody knew the, the European was a dog. That's why they let them in America under a contract, which was the original Constitution. Well, when the European got in here under that original Constitution, he knew right off the bat he could not, not do his dirt under the Constitution. So he changed it. He started with the clause in the Constitution, which was, uh, uh, let me see. Article one, par, uh, Article one, section paragraph seventeen, that said in, in so many words that you can, you will give you a ten square mile or ten mile square area that you can call the district a district. That's how they, his word is somewhere like that, and they took that and circumvented it and set up what you know today as Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. That's why it's never been counted as a state, because it's a district from the Constitution. And then they went further to create a supplement Constitution, which freed them to use color of law in order to do all the dirt. And the first thing they did was created a corporation. And once that was created in 1871, there was no looking back. Everything began to collapse. So, so we what don't they need did to... was they got around they got the Constitution. Around. Yes, they did. Yes. But they only did it through ignorance and fear. The Constitution is still intact today. Now, and so what you're about. saying, Ron, is that is that how you can uh, beat the bully through the con- with the con- the stick of the Constitution? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. And you got to learn it. You got to learn it. And that's why I'm so in love with the birth certificate, because that's the beginning of your freedom. Once you separate yourself, and most people look at that and say, "Are you telling me a, a news a, a piece of paper is going to stop them?" And I will say, "Yes, yes." But you got to know, paper. But you have people that. Have. But you have people that say it has not stopped them since they've been over here. They had that constitution from day one. Okay. But you you they went around. around. Yes. Yeah, they did. But they told you that you don't know if they went around it or not because you never knew of the constitution other than what they taught you in your school days. Yeah. When I tell you that we owned and ran everything up to uh, 1855, you'll look at me like I'm crazy. And then you'll say, well, prove it. Now i got to do some extensive research and bring you what they call uh, prima facie evidence to show yeah. you that we ran everything 
prior to 1855. Yeah. They took advantage of the of the war that we had among ourselves, going back to uh, Berlin and the different people, different tribes living in one area. They took the war that was fought, and then they circumvented the war and made it into another war that they called the Civil War, and then they put in the books what they wanted to put in the books. And they taught it to us and our children. And and anyone that didn't, that tried to teach to the contrary, they would uh, destroy them, just like they did, like the French are doing, kill them. If you if you teach out of the out of the ordinary, kill them. Her name so was what you, uh, the lady's name in Chicago was Marva Collins. She's the lady yeah, that set yeah. up that private school, and they ran her out of business. Well, they got another young guy. They they, they have another young yeah, guy over there guy now over that there that now has the school. Uh, I forgot his uh, name, but he's doing similar to what she's doing. Okay. What she All did. right. So, well, so see, Ron, with, before we leave here, so what you were talking about with the with France and the uh, 14 <clears throat> African colonies, so yes. can they win <clears throat> that bully there with their constitution? They don't have a constitution. Do they have to, they, they don't have a constitution. They're, they're not at, see, most, that's why they call them third world countries. How can I say this? The European knows about contracts. So they got, in order for them to do to us over here, they got a contract and they're working on a contract. They want this type of government to spread everywhere. But they can't get it to spread because people are not educated enough to understand it. And the, and the Africa, if you ever go to Africa, you'll understand. They don't like the European period. They want their own customs, let's put it that way. They'll put up with the mm-hmm. European if they bring in some type of way of life. But as far as running them and, and all of that, they don't go for that at all. They don't like uh, the, the, the punk we got here, old, old Wendell Anthony. They talked about him like a dog in 95 when I was over there. I said, what's wrong with him? He said he's too arrogant, and he thinks that we are Tarzan still alive. He comes over here and, and treats us like he's uh, European. He's going to do this and do that for us. When we had asked him, we want you to help us do what we're already doing. We don't need you to come over here and tell us what to do. He told me that. Okay. Indeed. So the bottom line is, the European knows about contracts, and 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 believe you me, the Earth knows about contracts. China, Japan, Malaysia, all those continents, those countries way over there, Russia, they know about contracts, and that's what they jam the United States with. The United States has to finagle a way to circumvent these contracts. But you don't need to talk about contracts when you go into third world countries like those that are in Africa. Gotcha. And even France, they don't have, those majority of those countries over there do not have a contract. United States is probably the only country that really has a contract, and they have circumvented it to come up with this new piece of trash they got. I read that somewhere. Mm-hmm. I'm going to need to try to find that. And that's why France right now, you'll probably see it on the news in the morning, they're taking, they're doing raids over there, and they're just kicking doors down, going in people's houses. They know, there's no contract or nothing to say they have rights. You don't ever hear them talk about rights over there. They don't talk about civil rights and, and human rights and stuff like that. They don't, they don't do that. That's why they okay. go get the gun, because they don't have anything else to deal with. We have a okay. caller, Ron. Well, let's do it. Okay. Area call 843-610. Are you there? Area call 843? Yes. Yes, greetings, family. I just wanted to say uh, it's interesting. 
opportunity to have this conversation. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I hear you. The conspiracy theory with Mel Gibson is on TV. Mel Gibson. Say that again. Yeah, he did a movie. That's not Sandra Bullock. Oh, Sandra Bullock. Have you ever seen that movie? What was the name of it? Was it wrong? What was the name of it? Conspiracy Theory. Oh, yeah. Oh, the Conspiracy Theory. Yes. Okay, so what are you saying? We, what are you I'm saying that, you know, they put so much information right in front of people's faces, just like you you guys always demonstrate the truth. You know, you always demonstrate the truth, but there's always some people who don't want to believe it, even though it's always right in front of their face. That's all yes, I just thought it was yes. interesting that... Um, yes, yes, I agree with you 100%, and it works. It always works. And they keep doing the same thing over and over. And they'll get somebody to come on TV and say Ron Marsh is a liar, but they never ask the second question, how can you prove it? They don't ever come up with that type of stuff. That's why I, I always want to bring truth when I get on the air, because if you don't like it, all I say to you, go look it up for yourself. And then come back and let's talk about it. But I appreciate your call, brother. I thank, thank you for all that you do, and uh, you also do the best blessings. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'm all right. Good. All right, Beth. I see we got a. I got a caller too. Can you uh, take one more? Okay. Yeah. Sure. All right. Let me see if I can get this. Yeah. There we go. Seven six three one one three seven. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How y'all doing tonight? We're good. Good. You must sound like yeah, you're yeah, next Yeah, that was. <laughs> I thought I had I thought I had Dad's number, but I I see I got I see I got Mr. March. Yes, sir. No, sir, I was do. uh you know the whole thing was going on in France. They uh they are knocking down doors now, and they, they had in under their rules or contract they can only do it for twelve days. But the president supposedly petitioned, is trying to figure figure out how to get it for the whole year. And oh. after this, yes, he wants to be able to kick down doors for a whole year without knowing nothing. And the activists are upset and said that, that, 12, that 12 days is long enough. And he's saying he 12 days ain't long enough for him to do what he needs to do. Wow, wow, wow. Now, now, and then they also here. they also supposedly interviewed um, the the masterminds neighborhood. Yeah. And the uh, and the people in the neighborhood, he's supposed to come from this middle class, upper middle class family, and all of these positive traits. And the and the kids in the fa- in the neighborhood said, well, the only reason he turned so called terrorist is because somebody discriminated against him. And they don't. They showed us don't want to bring that up. No, no. And that's what that's what the, I, when I when I saw that today. Plus, you know, we had a up here in Minnesota, the the cop shot a dude in the head and killed him. Uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning. Yeah. And and uh, Black Lives Matter took over the fourth precinct and camped out in front of the door until they released the information. And today. The police came in with force and uh, supposedly forced them out, and it was a big mess. And you ain't going to hear none of that on TV now because the French stuff is more important. So you ain't going to hear none of that. Wow. Did, didn't they shut down 94? Didn't they get out on the yeah, highway? Yeah, they shut down 94, and they arrested supposedly 31 of them. And then uh, today, the the police chief, our lovely police chief in, up in Minneapolis, she said we was – that the police station is for all the people, and the, and the Black Lives Matter people needs to move. And uh, they came in with a show of force, and and it's a, it's a big mess. It's on the internet, but I don't think none of the national news is gonna cover it. Wow. But anyway, wow. I, I do. I'm enjoying the show very much. I, uh, I appreciate. It. I'm enjoying y'all uh, do, bringing up things that. We don't normally think about, and, and at least you're getting it out there. So, 
There you go. Well, we have like, you. like-minded people. We need to stick together, build our nation. That's yes. right. That's right. Y'all have we a good night. We appreciate you for listening. Thanks for listening. All right. All right, Beth. I got another okay, call. Okay, Ryan. Yes. Well, hold on one second. Uh, area code 732-0893. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. Hi, Hi Mr. March. I was calling because um, you gave me a name of the judge last night, and I couldn't pull her up. I couldn't oh, find her on the line down in oh, Atlanta. You're talking about Anna... Anna Bond Victor O C O E Bond Anna Bond R I E T Z E N. Okay, Ryan R as in Robert. No. Yeah, the last name yes R as in Robert. I okay. Yep, and okay. she's a Alaska, also an Alaska judge. She's a, she's yeah, I got him. Judge. I got him. I mean, I got the lawyer. I couldn't get. I forgot Anna's name, and I was putting in the wrong thing. But you have a, you got a very interesting show, and I'm happy I was able. To, um, my brother told me to listen to you, and I'm happy I got the chance to listen to you. Um, they terminated one of my lawsuits. Um, I have to give a response. I'm working. I've been working on this injunction all day, and I'm thinking about putting um, the do not detain in the injunction. That's yes. what I'm doing. Yeah, and um, I'm gonna. Um, I'm trying to get it done so I can file it tomorrow in the federal court. Um, it's crazy. This is this stuff is crazy. What they're doing. What they're doing. Yes, it is. Now, did you get a chance to look up? Administrative remedies. Yeah, I, got, I, I, I already had that. Um, so I I started studying a little bit of it, but um, I was trying to get this injunction done first because I, they put out another warrant, and the judge that put a warrant out for me is one of the judges that I'm suing, and now I got to do a writ of error and get that dismissed. Because, yeah. you know, that would be a conflict of interest. Plus, this judge was arrested before. Why is he sitting on the bench putting out warrants on people? Okay. So I got to... Excuse me? Say he's, been, he's been arrested yeah. before? Yeah. The judge was arrested by the IRS because uh, he wasn't reporting money. And I added that lawsuit. They put a, the IRS put a lawsuit against him. So when I saw my lawsuit, I added that in there with my lawsuit. Wow. You, you, you kind of tough. You're tough, sister. That's all I can say. You're very I, tough. I have to be. They've been tough with me for decades, and now I've found the way to get back at them. Everybody want to get this dismissed now. They telling me that because um, I had my kids filing the lawsuit and. He didn't do paperwork. He didn't pay a policy. So now they trying to terminate all the lawsuits. You can't terminate. How can you terminate the lawsuits when I gave you the law that states that I don't have to pay a fee? The people don't have you to charge it. You told me I got to pay a fee, and I'm coming in here reporting the crimes that they're doing? That yes. don't make sense. No. When no. show me the law, I'm like you, Ron. Prove it. Prove it. Show wow. me the law, because I'm showing you the law. Everything, everything that I'm, everything I put in writing is backed up by the laws. Yes. Not a statute, not a code. The law. And right. and you so said you spoke about how they don't want want people to know they don't. They I told you last night they don't want me to teach this stuff that I'm learning. They told me, the FBI told me not to teach and to stay away from the groups because all the groups are being watched. Anybody protesting, they're watching them. <laughs> and so they told me, they said, don't do it. Because wow. like you said, anybody trying to teach, you know, 
They don't want no leaders coming out of the communities. And um, I've seen Chinese people, Chinese people own houses now. They have, when says when Chinese people get buy property in the hood? They own the houses in the hood areas here. They, okay, we, we know you got the restaurant, but now you own a house? A couple of houses? No. Yep. There's a problem here. The strategy, like you said, we have to get this word out and let these people know it's time. You got to start learning, learning this stuff. But a lot of people don't want to learn. They got to so dumb down. Okay, and they got the fear pumping, and I mean, it's, it's brothers, man. I, I get on them all, get on them all the time. How are you in a gang and you scared to stand up for your rights in the court? Come on, man. You don't, I don't respect that gang stuff. I really don't. If you can kill your own, you shouldn't have no problem going in that courtroom standing up for your rights. Yes. Yeah. And I tell them all the time, what they're doing in Paris right now, they under martial law. They get ready to bring this. This is why they're able to kick in these people's doors because they get ready to. This get ready to be worldwide. Yep. Yep. It's going to be worldwide. They know what they're doing. That's why the president talking about that guy said the president trying to get it done for a whole year. It's called Jade Ham. It's called Jade Ham. That's what it's called. Yep. And a lot of them now. A lot of these governors and all of them, they're under the Babylonian business plan. You got to look that up, Rob. The yes. Babylonian right. business plan. They all, they all right. working up under that. So we, we got to get, get prepared because they get ready to shut everything down. They get ready all to right. shut it down. They get ready to do this martial law. Yep. And, and the people, the black people, is not going to be ready. Got that right. All right, I want you to stay tough, though. Stay on that paperwork. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. what I'm writing in this injunction, they see they can't get around none of the stuff I put in there. Good. They can't get around Good. none of it because I'm hitting them with the law. So, All right. but I'll let you know. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good night. All right, Ron. We're going to yes, uh, end the show. And uh, thank you. And uh, you will be back in two weeks, you say, on December yes. the 2nd? Okay. Yes, I'll be back December so, the 2nd. Well, uh, all right. Uh, the, engineer, the engineer is going to call you because I think we're going to do a show while I'm gone. Uh, oh, we got okay, planned. great. Okay. We'll, we'll okay. let you know. Okay. All right. Okay, great. Great.